Why do airline pilots never receive a speeding ticket? Because they're above the law. Hello again, YouTube. I hope you're doing well. We set a like goal for that last video of 200, Tejo versus Alive, ended up being hot closer to 400, which is insane because that's in less than 24 hours. So here I am back once again. Now, I did say I would try and find a VOD from uh, your recommendations, your requests based on the comments down below. Unfortunately, none of the players were ready and available when I reached out to them. So I grabbed this one instead from two pretty good players. Hopefully you'll enjoy this PVZ that I have in store. Let's set the light goal for this one a little bit higher. So we, we said 200, we smashed it. Can we do 500? If we can do 500 likes in this video, I will not just go out of my way to cast a random replay off of the ladder. I'm going to set up a YouTube exclusive show match just for you guys. So if we can do 500 likes. I know it's a lot, but if we can do 500 likes on this video, we'll see what we can make happen. Again, if you have requests of players you'd like to see, I urge you, please comment down below with the names of the players you'd like to see. Last video had a lot of popular requests from Cyril and a few others. I'll keep those in mind, but let's see what you guys want. Now, it's about a minute late, but let's get into the introductions. To the bottom right side of the map, he's rocking a lot of different skins. I love it. It's going to be Psystorm Gaming's Ragnarok. With his opponent in the top left, also rocking some cool new building skins. We have the barcode, but if you scan this barcode at Walmart, beep, 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 it's parting now I'm actually I, I i like both of these guys and i know it's like the typical thing to be like oh i'm a big fan of both this guy's good this guy's not whatever uh they're both gonna put on a good show i'm not here to do any of that the reality is parting is a good friend of mine i like to roast him all the time in fact the proper introduction for him would have been in the top left he's the poor boy can't win any prize money he's so bad at starcraft it's farting but I won't do that. I'll try to cast this objectively. But Parting is a good friend of mine. Uh, Ragnarok's also a really nice guy. Very lovely. Have never had a negative interaction with him in my entire time knowing him. Uh, and he's a Psystorm, which is great. Psystorm's had a bit of a rough road. They recently had a bit of issue what with HGC getting canceled. But their StarCraft squad appears to still be out in force. they got some good Koreans. And uh, Ragnarok and True are great Zerg representatives. Now... Parting has, uh, of course, been one of the guys who came back from the military here. Or, well, name military, excuse me. That's completely wrong. Parting left, not to do military. Parting left to play League of Legends. I, we just cast Tasia the other day, so of course I've got my brain all mixed up for that. But Parting left for a while, I did League of Legends. He stopped playing StarCraft 2. He came back. A lot of people were hoping he'd be really prolific because this guy was winning Team Liquid ma map contests. You've seen his banners at BlizzCon, I'm sure. Parting was, at a time, like one of the best Protoss players. Unfortunately, nowadays, he's kind of more of just like a goof, and he likes to stream, and hey, more power to him. He's still pretty good, and Ragnarok and Parting, I think, are two players who, again, I, I feel are very similar in skill level. I don't see Parting being massively better than Ragnarok, or Ragnarok being massively better than Parting. And when I look for these replays, I'm trying to grab ones that don't just have, like, some big name like Maru, which I guess I was guilty of doing for the first one, but trying to find players who I think are a little bit closer in skill and will give us a good game. And PvZ... It's not quite my favorite matchup right now. We're getting to that point. TVZ's had that title for so long, but until people figure this out and Zerg stop dying to Battlecruisers, uh, we're getting our longer games out of PVZ a lot of the time. Now, granted, Adept All-Ins and Zella All-Ins can still happen, and classic Archon War Prism openings cause a lot of chaos that don't necessarily mean longer games, but Parting's not gone for that necessarily so far. He opened with a Stargate... And I like Ragnarok's faster Overlord speed here. It's going to allow him to get into the base and confirm some scouting information. Namely, whether there's going to be a second Stargate or not. Obviously, for somebody like Parting, he's a bit of a funny guy. He's capable of many builds. But one thing that's been pretty strong in the PvZ scene is a double Stargate opening. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Bob's your uncle. There she goes. I want to act like this was all impressive. Oh, I called it. I'm so good at this game. I called it. But the reality is a lot of players are doing this. And it's the follow-up to this that's even more intriguing to me because it's a double Stargate oftentimes into a double Robo. Now, maybe Parting doesn't go double Robo. Showtime, a couple of the really good European Protoss have been kind of pushing that point, but uh, the Stargate opener alone is pretty powerful. He's continuing to invest in Phoenix for the time being. We'll see how high this goes. The double Stargate, I gotta imagine it goes higher. But maybe his time spent away from the game and over in China has led him down the dark path of Oracles. Ugh. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch a game from Haas. But uh, so far, it is just Phoenix. Now, for Ragnarok, they did get full scouting on their first Stargate. Oh, Ragnarok's using the D.Va announcer? I'm, like, super voting against Ragnarok right now. Go parting. 
But uh, Ragnarok didn't get to confirm the second Stargate. However, by the timing of the second Phoenix and the third Phoenix and the fourth Phoenix, he likely will. Actually, he's even got an Overlord set, uh, set up to maybe Kamikaze into the main for his scout. Ling's ducking around here to look for that third. It's coming down soon, but not just yet, so a little bit off on the timing. Stalker at the gate holds that Ling back, and, well, there's a couple of Phoenix moving the wrong direction, but Ragnarok's seen the second Stargate. That's all he needs to know. In fact, here, even if he didn't see the second Stargate, he'd see this, but uh, I like that small move. It's a small detail, but it's a good detail. He didn't go back in to confirm the second Stargate, but seeing that many Phoenix, he knew exactly what was up, and he starts bringing his Overlord back home because he doesn't want to lose this for nothing. Now, before the action kicks off, I just want to talk a little bit about this whole YouTube exclusive content, guys. Um, and I know the money stuff is always boring to talk about, but you have to understand we don't make any ad revenue on YouTube. For all of 2018, we made zero dollars and zero cents. And I'm not here to ask for your money. I'm not here to beg for Patreon. What I am going to say, though, is like if we can get some advertising going, like just you guys who like these videos, you comment on these videos, you help other people see these videos and hopefully in turn would help people fall in love with Base Trade TV or at least in a little bit of a way Rifkin. So um, when it comes to this sort of stuff, it's kind of limited. And some of you might be wondering, like, why didn't we start getting more of this YouTube exclusive content sooner? And the reality is it's just I couldn't afford to do it. Luckily, we're in a position right now where even as tournament scheduling winds down and is starting to get back up again for January, I've got all this free time on my hand. I could sit around doing nothing or I can make some more cool StarCraft content. And that's kind of the goal of what I'm doing with these videos. So I really love you guys. And yes, we've got that 500 like goal for this video. We'll see where it goes. But just please understand if Papa Rifkin goes out for cigarettes and doesn't come back, it's not because he's abandoning you, okay? I'll, I'll be back at some point. But with uh, our Twitch stuff picking back up here in the next week, there might be a bit of scarcity to this content. That being said, if it's well received, I have no reason not to keep doing it. So that's just a little bit of a personal update here while we have some subtle nuances of nothing going on. The Phoenix is just looking for a couple of kills. I do like that Ragnarok invested in a lot of additional spore crawlers, but you guys will probably note here, it's not really stopping the Phoenix, just simply deterring them from staying around for too long. So I've picked off quite a few drones, seven in total, and the queen. Not too bad for these Phoenix, considering parting has lost nothing for it. Now, the follow-up to this is a Robo. In fact, he's got the Robo Bay finished up. Chances are you go to Colossus. Yep, there we go. Because you know your opponent's going to go Phoenix. That's, uh, excuse me, Hydralisks to deal with the Phoenix. Now, oh, Parting got a little bit too greedy there. Going for a few more kills. Gets some of the Hydras, but loses three Phoenix for it. However, it also confirms the fact that it's Hydras. So, going for Colossus, getting charge lots to pair with this. He should win every ground battle. But this is where things will get really interesting for the late game. And this has a little bit to do with the patch from StarCraft 2. Not a lot, but a little bit. Because for a long time, Colossus were just out. And the reason you could never, ever go Colossus against Zerg, Vipers are just too powerful. Um, and even if you could go Colossus, it was sometimes a little bit risky, Corruptors and all these other things. But nowadays, we're in a weird spot for PvZ. Because now, even though you go Colossus, and even though the present danger of Vipers still exists, you've had a lot of other unit interactions changed that kind of changed the, the dynamic for the late game. Here's an example. So let's say you go for these Colossus, and the typical response is get a Hive out, as we see possibly come down here with the Infestation Pit. Uh, you get Vipers out, you go for the Abducts, but the Zerg in the past would have to make like a lot of Vipers just because you know that some of them would get feedbacked, and you don't want the Templar to be an auto-win, you lose the Vipers. Expensive units. Now it doesn't happen that way because High Templar don't do as much damage with feedbacks. They can still stop air units with energy and all that good stuff, but they can't actually kill them in one shot like before. So all of a sudden, Zerg have the opportunity to go Vipers where they never did or at least shouldn't have had the opportunity to go in the past. Uh, again, it opens doors up for Ragnarok, but we'll see what his response is to this, because I do want to note that while he finished up the Infestation Pit, did not start his Hive right away. He's got the money for it, and I know he's chasing around these Phoenix, but that Hive might just simply, excuse me, the Infestation Pit might just be for Infestors. Pair a couple of those bad boys up here with some air units, Corruptors in the sky to deal with the Colossus, you name it, and suddenly Ragnarok's got a great ground force. The Banlings are a little questionable to me. Uh, I think he's really hoping to just wash away a front line, but Parting is playing really different. Uh, I'm not going to try and classify this as anything, but just he doesn't have that standard wall of Zealots to go in front of the Colossus. Uh, he doesn't even have Zealot Charge, just as a bit of a highlight here. So typically when you're going for these Banlings with speed, you're looking to do a couple of different things with this, right? Oh, he's got him in Overlords too. This is really cool. Um, one of those things is either you drop those banlings earlier on the sides of the map, cool. I think he should be able to pull this off. But the other thing too is like you're supposed to roll through the zealots. You're supposed to roll through the high temple on the back lines. And you pick off those really expensive units so the rest of your Zerg army can actually contest what's on the field. 19 banlings are coming down, for example. 
But the part of this that's weird that I can highlight is this is a mostly soccer army. There's a lot of sentries with this. There's no ravagers in place, so there's no way to break these force fields when they go down. There's going to be nine corruptors coming up behind this too. Hydras are just kind of roaming around looking for positioning. I like this move out of Ragnarok. Never fight this Protoss army head on. You're going to get force fielded in half. You come in from three different angles, a little bit more difficult to pull that off. A hive also starts up behind this while this is going on. Ragnarok looking for the 360 surround. Parting's got to be very careful. Ramps are advantageous, but there's a lot of open space here in Port Alexander. And Oh, he does get caught here to the south side, but great force fields. Corruptor's coming from the right side. Corruptor's going to take out the Colossus, but I mean, that's an eventuality. As long as these Colossus can kill enough of the Hydras before then. Oh my god, this surround is so sick, but the force fields are even sicker. He keeps this alive. He's doing Warp Prism Micro to keep this Colossus around for an extra shot or two. Oh my god, Party wins this fight. And I can't even, I can't even hardly believe it. That for me was such a perfect engagement for any Zerg player. Comes in from both sides, full surround, corruptors on top of the Colossus, but with some cool Warp Prism Micro and some fantastic force fields. Parting without any storms holds that engagement. Now he continues to push across, which is a little dangerous. He doesn't have a lot of energy or more importantly, a lot of sentries left over after that fight. That being said though, he's still pushing in. Grab some of the Hydras. The Banleys aren't done yet. The Colossus. Nowhere to be found, but the force fields are good! Once again, Party nails it with those force fields! Now, I don't know if he can take on the Hydra list here, and blinking out might be his best option. He does have blink on these stalkers. But, oh my god, the force field control out of this guy this game. Look, I'm the first person who likes to take a dump on Parting and be sarcastic and shitty, but he has nailed it so far this game. Grabs some of the Corruptors on the way out, loses a Nexus to Caustic Spray. A little unfortunate, but luckily he's been continuing to play a really solid macro game behind this. So he's got on his fourth base, Ragnarok's on his fifth, maybe thinking about the sixth even. Either way, both players are just nailing it in this game, and I got the like, big kudos to Party. I'm sorry, Ragnarok. I know you should be all cool and gushing over you two. You've done a lot of great moves. But nothing looks as goddamn as impressive as those force fields did in either of those engagements. Now, Storm's finally coming into play. We also have a mothership in queue. This is where it gets endgamey for Protoss. I'm a little bit more than just difficult for Zerg to deal with. Oh, unless you walk a bunch of stalkers into Hydras and give them away. Meanwhile, Banley's catching a lot of probes on the retreat from the other base. Nexus is going to get killed by the looks of it. I don't think there's any way to save this. No, it's really unfortunate for parting. Move commanding of stalkers combined with losing that fourth base is going to be a rough spot to come back from. Ragnarok is on Hive Tech, uh, although he's not really doing anything with it yet. As soon as the uh, Lurker Den's done, I guess we'll start seeing that look a little bit better. Adaptive Talons will likely be his, his aim here. But boy, oh boy, did this, this get crazy. Those probes are also the wrong spot. He realizes this too. One lone cannon tries to stop, but unfortunately it can't stop anything. Storm's still not done, so even if the Templar could, it won't. Ling's run to the natural base. Things are starting to get really chaotic for our Protoss player in this matchup. Ragnarok slipping through all the cracks while he's still getting his tech up behind it. Party had an attack over here on the right side, a couple of zealots, but he's not done anything with them yet. He's been so distracted with dealing with everything at home, trying so hard not to lose that Robo Bay. Oh, it's coming down to the wire. Two health. It does it barely goes down, but it does go down. Twelve lurkers start morphing in instantly. We got some, uh, of course, adaptive talents coming in. Upgrades are kind of low there for Ragnarok, and this could really hurt him. Party sitting here on plus three weapons. He's just lost a lot of his tech. He lost control of his fourth base. Our partner's player is not in a great spot, but he does have upgrades, and he's got Storm, and I think these two things combined are all he really needs to do uh, to take a good fight. Remember, all those Corruptors uh, didn't get remade. There's no Viper currently in play. At the moment, there's no actual real good way to deal with a Mothership. Add in a couple of Time Warps. Well, just one for now. A couple of these Storms. I think Parting's definitely got the superior army when it comes to this fight. But those Lurkers, man. It's going to come down to those Lurkers chonking on this Stalker army. He walks a little too close to the sun, realizing, wait a minute, that's not going to fly. Mothership's also going to back away from this. Time Warp's an interesting thing to cast. It's not a great spot. But if he can zone out the Hydras, and he can use Storms here. Oh god, he's getting really dangerous though. Those Storms are clumped up. He wanted to use the Mothership. It's clear he wanted to use the Mothership to zone out the Lurkers. Maybe force them to move back, lest he lose them. But unfortunately, mission not accomplished here for parting. And Ragnarok has a good defense down to the south. Coming up around the top side, there's a couple of spine crawlers down. So Ragnarok still has a pretty solid defense. I don't think parting's going to catch him off guard at any point. But if he decides to dedicate, there's always the risk of these freaking Lurkers. They just deal way too much damage. Presently, there's no Immortals in play. Uh, I don't think we have a single one on the map. No Colossus. I honestly don't know how Parting's going to get through those Lurkers, other than Brute Force. And he doesn't have the money to go Brute Force. In fact, he's not maxed out. It's Ragnarok who is. 
So he's going to come down here to the south and catch up on these units that have been running by. Uh, try to save his fourth base again. He should be able to pull it off this time. He's got enough units. Although, I say that, and maybe not. Full surround, these legs doing a lot of damage. Adrenal gland's not even in play. It's just plus one legs. It's just a lot of plus one legs. That's so expensive for Barting. He really needs to get a fourth base established soon. If he doesn't, there's just no way he can keep up with the money game that is going to be trading out with these lurkers, trading out with these hydras. Starts going for some carriers now. One of the best things that could go for Parting right now that could maybe hurt Ragnarok is if Ragnarok makes too many lurkers and he doesn't leave enough hydras in play to have anti-air. I mean, look at his ground force, right? 25 bailings on the way. We have uh, 16... Ooh, <laughs> we have 16 lurkers on the map. Pair that up with those 25 bailings, and yes, Parting is going to die on the ground. But that's where the sky comes into play. And if there's a couple of carriers and a couple of good storms and those hydras don't get to be the anti-air force, Parting could technically kill everything that's left on the map. And oh, he's catching a lot of these lurkers with those storms. Mothership gets abducted. She's going to throw down a desperate time warp, but she's going to die. Lurkers. Oh, no. Parting gets absolutely annihilated here on the front lines. Everything gone. These storms are doing a lot of damage on the way out. Let me just look at the resources last trade, right? It's it's almost even. But the problem is, Parting's down to half the overall supply of his opponent. Where is that army? He's got a couple of carriers. I'm not sure where they are at the moment. They're building interceptors. Here we are in the natural base. But those hydras are right on top of them already. The abduct comes in. He almost loses one. He does lose one of the carriers. Storm still trying to take out these lurkers. Almost removed from play. Almost two remaining. It's making it very dangerous. And the lings atop of these stalkers. It's not looking promising for Parting at this point. I don't know what he does to come back into this. Because there's seven corruptors coming out on the back side. There's more where this came from, and Parting can't rely on his air to be his saving grace. They're just going to get to Like, e even if it's not the Hydras, even if it's not the Abducts, it's going to be the Corruptors just moving in and focusing down those carriers because Parting just lost a lot of his Stalkers in that fight. He doesn't have reliable anti-air anymore. Oh my god, a lot of units have died in making this game. That Protoss chart is just... It's literally off the chart. And that's uh, five gateways that just got depowered. That's a little rough to deal with. The Zealots will clean up these links eventually. I highlighted earlier the upgrade discrepancy between these two, and Ragnarok's done a great job bridging that gap. Uh, finally starts up his own adrenal gland upgrades, but his things are still only going to be on barely plus two, if that. Okay, he's going through, take out a lot of the cannons. Zealots will stop the space from going down. So important, parting protects this. More valuable than his main base, even. What's the point of having all this production if you can't afford any of it? So this fourth base needs to stand. And I'm sure he's a little sick of these attacks coming out of Ragnarok. Ragnarok, though, I guess is kind of biding his time. He's got a little bit better income than, than Parting. It's hard to show you guys without the graphs, because, again, this is a never-before-seen game, blah, blah, blah. But um, because we don't have a tournament setting, we don't have WCS, can't quite bring that up so easily to highlight. Oh, that Warp Prism feels bad, man. Caustic Spray is going to take down a lot of units here in the main base, or a lot of buildings. Forcing a big recall out of Parting is not an overreaction. Uh, whether it's Stalkers or Carry, he needs some way to push off these Corruptors. Because if they get to sit there and Caustic Spray, it's going to cost them another Nexus, it's going to cost them Stargates, and frankly, Parting cannot afford to replace these buildings anymore. He's at a part of the game where, oh no, these carriers are on the wrong spot. Shield Battery is going to try and keep these alive. Uh, Shield Battery actually helps out a lot. That carrier survives barely, but it does survive this one as well. Oh my god, are Shield Batteries the best thing in the game or what? Oh my god, he doesn't get either of the carriers, and he's trying to get out of there with the Corruptors. I think if he just committed, he would have traded out, but unfortunately, these Corruptors are going to get it. Well, actually, screw it. I didn't notice it. Parting didn't notice it. Fourth base under attack while well, this goes on. And this Nexus going to fall once. Oh, wait. Hold the phone. Not again. Parting has lost four Nexus this game. One in the natural. Three down here. This one stands, albeit with 84 health. But it stands. And he needs this money. Now, the carrier's living was a pretty big deal, actually. Uh, not only is it extra damage, but it's the air damage. So things like these lurkers will not be as problematic as they would be for, say, High Templar or Zealots. Killing them both before they even get a shot off. Ragnarok is on a surprisingly low army, and I think this isn't a mistake. He's keeping his army low because he doesn't know what the composition he wants is. He's got 1,600 minerals on the bank, 2,200 gas. It's a situation where he's got to react, but if he waits too long... That's where Parting might have an end, because Parting right now has better army than Ragnarok. Ragnarok can't even dive these carriers anymore. If he does, it's just not worth it. He's going to lose so much for it. He doesn't have the coverage for it. It's a run by to the natural base, causing a lot of chaos. Will probably kill quite a few buildings, but the Vipers get picked off in the center of the field. He's going to move in with the Zealots, and we might just be in a bit of a base trade. I see with a question mark. It's the name of the movie. 
but there's no way for him to get on top of these carriers. The Zealots are going to shred the Queens. All the stack defense is up here to the north, not down here to the south. And Ragnarok, again, he's making just corruptors. What are you doing? He's got 2k in the bank. 2k, 2k, and he's not making Hydras. Caustic Sprays kills another Nexus. I think that's like, what, number five now on the kill list? Yikes. I, I, I'm like, oh, Party's losing this so badly. Because the base trade, he's losing his production. He's losing everything he has back at home. And in his race against time, he is killing a lot. And the funny thing is, Ragnarok might not have any larva going for it. No, he's got 27. I don't know why he was so hesitant to build anything, but 11 Corruptors are coming out. And I, I want to say that's the wrong move because it's four carriers. I I don't think the carriers are the problem here. It's the stalkers, it's the zealots. Like every single one of those eggs, every single one of those larvae, that should be hydras, that should be links, that should be bailings, that should be, ah, ah. Well, that will work. That'll get it done. Uh, the carriers are in some trouble. Crepper's gonna finally take these out by the looks of it. Takes a bit of time here. Storm, Archon, helps, but doesn't solve the issue. How does Parting deal with seven Broodlords? That is gonna be a real big problem, a huge conundrum. Zealots and Templar were left at home. He's long distance mining a little bit from this base. Both players are just kind of screwed for cash at this point. There's no debating that. So it comes down to what armies do they have to fight with. And Ragnarok had spent that bank on Broodlords. He's banking on Broodlords to save him in this game. But I feel like his desperation may be ultimately what is his undoing. Drones are in full retreat now. He wants to try and transfer these down here to the south and I guess mine more safely down here. Uh, looks like the storms are good. He's, oh, he takes out the links. That was the only real danger on the other side of the field. Unfortunately, it panics a bit, so it makes an Archon, but an Archon's still going to be useful going forward. I, oh, how do you deal with these Broodlords? I think, you know what's crazy? Okay. If Ragnarok has this unkillable army, but it's slow, he can never really maneuver it around to catch the army of Parting. And if Parting hits and runs with Blink Stalkers, maybe he makes that work. But also on top of this, Parting is mining, not effectively, but he is. So is Ragnarok off of one base. If either of these guys can shut down the mining of the other one, it would just be game over. Because Parting is at this stage of the game where he has to restart his tech from scratch. He's building a gateway, then he builds a cyber core, then he builds a void ray out of a star. Like it takes a while to get to that point, but he can. If Ragnarok loses this base to the south, and it doesn't look like he will just yet, but if he loses this base to the south, Ragnarok is in no position to do that himself. It is desperate times for both players. Desperate measures for sure. Ling's catching a nice surround. Those Adrenal Glands are finally coming into play. Uh, the Archon will go down barely. Stalker's getting here a little too deep. He wants to kill this Nexus. He doesn't. Oh, that's a big kill, not a cancel. Same with the base up here to the top right. Ragnarok is now knocked down to one single hatchery remaining. Well, excuse me, one effective hatchery remaining. He still has these hatcheries over here, but this is the only one mining off of anything. Ling's are trying to kill that new base. Party pulls probes. Oh boy, this got wild. This got crazy. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Because <laughs> uh, these are the types of games I wish we had more of. But yikes. What a crazy situation to be in. Broodlords are seven for the count and only two links in play. There's really nothing else other than these Broodlords. But until Parting finally gets something else to deal with this, these are not enough stalkers to deal with this army. Parting can't shut down the mining. He can't get an engagement worth a damn here. And he just keeps bleeding out every time he pokes in. A Stargate is the only way he's going to win this game. Double Stargate's coming out. I don't know if he's got the money for double Stargate's, funny enough, but he is building extra bases. Ooh, gets caught up here in the top. Not so sneaky. A well-placed observer, by the way, near Ragnarok's base. You can kind of see what's going on. This will be picked off here shortly, I guess. Although, wait, there's no Overseers. There's no Overseers, actually. This, this observer... This is like a game-winning observer if I could just see where the army is. Because the second Ragnarok moves out, he's going to have that base sniped off. I guarantee it. Corruptors over here are going to get caught. Three free kills. I'd say grab every one of them. Especially because he's got his Void Rays coming out. Now there's literally no idea. Forget Void Rays. Phoenix are cheaper. If he just goes for Phoenix, there's nothing. No, I'm wrong. But there's almost nothing that could shoot the skies at this point. I like the idea he had there of going for the Hydra Den. He's got to get the Zelts back home. He's got to get something home. He needs this Nexus. Party has lost so many bases. He's lost so many fourth bases specifically this game. And another one's going to bite the dust. Eight Nexus have fallen in the course of this game. I don't know that I've seen a game be so potentially winnable with that many dead Nexus. But oh my god. 
We got two Voidoids. Money for two Voidoids. That's all he needs. Five Hydras come out. If, if those Archons and Stalkers die taking out the Hydras, then he's won the game. Like, all he has to do is get those Voidoids on top of the Rude Lords. Prismatic Alignment. Melt their faces off because there's nothing here that shoots back up. And I think Parting realizes this too. So he's going to catch these Brood Lords super out of position. Oh my god, they die so quick. Prismatic Alignment also... Oh, this was a big patch deal. 25% movement speed instead of 50% movement speed when they're in super death laser mode like that. So they could actually move in to pick off a second Brood Lord. Down to the wire, both players are at around the same overall supply. But I think at the end of the day, Parting's is better. I think this Void Race could actually take on the Hydras. It's tough to say, though. He doesn't want to commit to this. He's waiting for that third Void Ray to come out. He is mining on the top side while this goes on, too. Losing these bases down here is not worth throwing the game over. But, oh my god, is this getting desperate for both. Ragnarok's pushing the issue here because he knows he has to. Stalker's managed to blink away briefly, but that might expose the Void Rays, which is a terrifying idea. Oh, another Void Ray goes down. He just needs one, though. These Hydras are... Diving a little too deep. Oh my god, this is so much of no way. I can't even believe. He got another Void Ray started up. I got no, it's just a Chrono Boost. That's a little awkward. God, if he went for Phoenix, this Phoenix gonna lift up the Hydras. They're cheaper, they're more efficient. He's gonna recall the probes out of there. Beautiful save here out of party to salvage the situation, but he's still gonna have to long distance mine with this. Meanwhile, because the Broodlords are so out of position, recognizing the opportunity, party hops on top of Ragnarok's bases, which are trying to mine here. So I love that he takes out the drones, bringing his opponent's worker count down to 18, most of which are on this base. No, all of which are on this base. Picks off the Overseer. Not sure that's that big of a deal, but diving a little too deep, maybe flying too close to the sun. Ragnarok is getting so desperate in this game. If he loses these Hydras, that's it. There's nothing. The Foyer can just go in. Oh, I want to just sacrifice the stock. Just blink on top of the Hydras. I'm screaming eternally, guys. This is insane. He's going to do it. He goes through the blink. He grabs the Hydras. One goes down. Not two. But I think maybe the Void Ray. There's two more Void Rays. Three more Void Rays. Two Hydras cannot stop. Seven Hydras might be able to. He's got to go for this now. Oh, no way. He's backing away with the Hydras. He's too scared to get in here. These Void Rays can take on low amounts of Hydras. Okay, here we go. The, the battle of attack speed. This comes down. This is so down to the wire. Oh, no. Party's going to lose everything with this. No way. I thought he was going to win. Party sent me this replay. Who does that? Well, okay. I guess. Is it a good guy thing? Party sends me a replay. So you just assume like, oh, Party's probably going to win this game. Ragnarok steals victory at the end. But God damn. That came down to the wire. Look at the resources lost. Hang on. Before we end this broadcast, look at the resources lost. Look at the units lost. Oh my, third, oh Jesus. <laughs> well, good game. Well played. Thanks for watching YouTube. Hopefully I'll see you with some more in the not so distant future. Oh my God.